Да, тру. We had a restful night's sleep. At 8 a.m., we headed to the hotel's breakfast. Breakfast spread was absolutely amazing. It featured sausages, ham, spring rolls, and fried eggs prepared in various ways. Additionally, there was an assortment of bread, spreads, fruits, sweets, and of course, coffee. Around 10 a.m., Muhammad assisted us on behalf of Sanjar. I will go. Okay, we'll go here. You sit in the front. Huh? No, I think the guys will. Are you coming? No? Ah, he's coming. That's why he need to talk. We need to pass by currency. Mm, currency exchange. Can you talk to them? Brother? We need to go to currency exchange. Money exchange. I am English. No? Ah. No. Okay. Uh, money, money, dollar change. Change. Ah. Dollar change to some. No, no, no. No? We attempted to find a money changer. But most of the banks were closed due to its being the weekend. Despite our efforts, we found a money changer. But unfortunately, they only dealt with currencies such as Japanese yen, Swiss franc, US dollars, euros, and British pound. This experience prompted me to recommend changing your currency to dollars before traveling to Uzbekistan and converting it to their local currency SOM. By 11 a.m., Muhammad had dropped us at another station. We noticed that the majority of cars and transportation were white in color. I had read online that this choice of color was due to its perceived beauty and also as a practical measure in the hot climate, as white reflects sunlight. We asked Orshid to stop by some local fruit sellers on the roadside to purchase drinks and fruits. We were touched by the friendly gestures of the local. Despite initial assumptions, they were not overly conservative but rather very warm, friendly, and approachable. I grew to love this country for its welcoming atmosphere. What's your good name, brother? Okay. Thanks to Google, we were able to communicate effectively as Uzbekistan is home to speakers of Turkic languages, Tajik, and Russian. I observed that the passengers were required to exit the car during gasoline refueling. Some locals approached us, requested to take some photos with us. We even spotted black sheep along the way. The people we encountered were truly amazing. It's a black sheep. Black sheep? Ah, it's a black sheep. Black sheep. By 3.41 p.m., we had reached our destination. Summer Camp. And this is the, one of the steps of Mimbar. Mimbar means in a mosque, 
Imam sits on top of the everyone and gives, gives a speech to the crowd during the Friday Mass. This is one of the steps of that. The Samarkand Museum named Gur i Amir or also known as Tamerlane served as the final resting place of Amir Timur. The Turko Mongol conqueror along with his two sons and two grandsons. Okay. The founder of Great Empire. Ah, okay. In 15th centuries. Not in 15th centuries. In Turkey, in Azerbaijan, Georgia, oh. Armenia. Like so we, this is all ruled by one king. Exactly. Is it a green shadow, the color of the empire of Amir? True. Empire. Gur i Amir, Persian for the tomb of the king, is a captivating structure that holds historical significance. It's intriguing to draw a connection between this tomb and historical sites like India's Red Port in Delhi, where Mongols also had an impact. And now, being in Uzbekistan, I learned that Amir Timur had once conquered India. It's fascinating to gather such educational insights. The Timur founded Delhi by like 1470. Yeah. Generation check the throne like Shaibanids. They are mostly known as a generation of King Isan also, you know? King Isan Timur and Sultan, Tomb of Amir Timur. This one? The grandson of Amir Timur, Mohammed Sultan. Firstly buried grandson. After that, Timur and his two sons and grandson. But in front of the everyone, then the tomb of Amir Timur's mentor, you know, teacher, recite Baraka. On the left hand, we can see the, one of the religious teachers of Amir Timur. There is ah. a symbol, you know, the wooden head tail on top of this. It means it's a it big, means, uh, it's a big, it's like relative for them, this, yes. uh, the teacher. Yes. Okay. No, this is the special thing, the symbol for the religious people. Ah, okay. This, that means there is someone religious person on the left side. Moreover, the museum construction is truly remarkable with every detail leaving a lasting impression. Ah, uh, that one inside is not the true. The real tomb underground. Oh. They need to build underground. And yeah, but it's not allowed. It's not allowed there. Yes, yes, not allowed. Not allowed the tomb yes. of the moon. In front of this, you can see like that, mausoleum. Almost the same amount, the same shape. It was built for the next generation, but it's empty as you have seen. It is because after the war, the family escaped to Afghanistan. That's why now it's empty. Mm, I see. Still, some generation is alive, or maybe Sorry, I am the generation. Maybe I am the generation also. <laughs> yeah, what's the what's the default? This one. This one like a, also mausoleum. There, there place to live. No, no, no. That's a grave. Burial place. Ah, burial place. Yes. The one. <laughs> Supposed to be burial place. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Ah, your name? Yeah. Amin. 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 Yes. Yeah, we are with Amir. Amin. Amin. Yeah. Looks okay. like that. At 4.28 p.m., we arrive at the renewed Samarkand Square, a precious gem nestled in the heart of the Asian city. Its architectural grandeur had gathered global recognition, leading to its inclusion in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2001. You know, 15th century is madrasa, like a school, maybe university, because it's the biggest building. 
the left side building like called Ulubek Madrasa after the name of the grandson of Amir Timur because Ulubek built this Madrasa on the right side this is Sherdar like a tiger mm -hmm. Sherdar Madrasa in front of us this is the Tilakari Mosque and Madrasa also the square boost three majestic madrasha, the Ulugbek Madrasha, Sherdo Madrasha, and Tilakori Madrasha. These structures are immense and captivating. We encountered fellow travelers and noticed many were eager to take photos with our friend Sukaina. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is the main building of the mosque. Inside is like a gold painting. They use it more than five kilos gold for the decoration. In front of us, you can see the mihrab. Mihrab means direction to Mecca. All Muslim people praise direct to Mecca. This is the mimbar. Imam sits on top of the everyone and gives a speech to the crowd during the only Friday mosque. This is one dollar. <laughs> one this big lady, like yeah. this. Come. Renting traditional clothings offered an unforgettable experience. Beyond stunning photos, it transported us to a different time, evoking a sense of the past. I noticed how enthusiastic Madame Jam was when he explained numerous aspects to us. This happened since we had reached Samarkand around 3 p.m., deviating from our plan 12 p.m. arrival. We left Samarkand Square around 5.30 p.m. to catch the last train to Tashkent for the day. By 6 p.m., we had reached the train station. Our unusual routine of interacting with locals and fellow tourists continued. So day two, all the way from Samarkand, we have done our trip. It was amazing. We met some amazing people who us even ended up kissing my cheeks. Can you imagine even the police officer, the food, the place? It's just incredible. I love Uzbekistan. I'll definitely come again just for the people. Thank you. <laughs> The train arrived around 6.30 p.m., accommodating passengers comfortably with its spacious interior.
we arrived in Tashkent at 10.40 p.m. Fortunately, Sukarna had contacted Sanjar and he arranged for us to be met by Muhammad. Since we hadn't had lunch or dinner, Sanjar kindly treated us to the Art Club restaurant. Even though it was already 11.18 p.m. and we were quite exhausted from the long journey, we managed to enjoy a hearty meal. That night, Sanjar introduced us to the country's national cuisine along with sharing insights into the difference between Eastern and Western Tashkent. Not only that, but he also sprinkled in some jokes, making the evening even more delightful. The difference is getting more and more and more. Difference number one, Western Tashkent people prefer to eat lamb. Okay. Well, Eastern Tashkent yeah. hates lamb. They eat only beef. Okay. Mm. Western Tashkent drinks only green tea. Okay. Eastern Tashkent drinks only oh. black tea. Oh, so is uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Western Tashkent people is more Islamic. Mm. Like uh, the women, the girls are in hijab. Oh. Eastern Tashkent everything like no hijab absolutely uh nightclubs girls open wear i mean clothes fashion styles everything and is nightclubs in western tashkent only mosques in eastern tashkent mosques church catholic orthodox uh synagogue everything uh, and also uh, dialect. Uh, okay. Only original Tashkan people can differ the dialect mm -hmm. between Western and Eastern Tashkan. Mm -hmm. There is a little different uh, difference, but the provincial people never differ the uh, difference between the dialects of Tashkan people. Mm -hmm. They cannot. Uh, and also, uh, what shall we do? <laughs> So, food culture. Uh, uh, speaking, the main speaking. language is in uh, Eastern Tashkin is Russian language. Okay. Even the oh. Uzbek people speak to each other only in Russian language. In the Western, a lot of people doesn't even cannot even speak Russian. well Russian. Okay. So and also uh, approximately 30% of the people population of the Eastern Tashkent is a 